This is the Horse Radio Network. This is episode 91 of the Stable Scoop Radio Show on the Horse Radio Network. Tack and habit. Please support our sponsors as they make this show possible. Equestrian Collections brings the whole universe of equestrian shopping to your fingertips. Visit them at equestriancollections.com. And The Barnworks, for all of your equine marketing needs at thebarnworks.com. Welcome to the Stable School, where weekly shows delivered right to you. With Helena and Glenn the Geek, live from the stable, it's every week. They bring you the news through hay or high water, while using their tails as their own fly swatters. Sit on down and laugh till your poop calls. It's time again for Stable School. Stable School. Stable School. Stable School. This is Glenn the Geek. And this is Helena B. And you're listening to the Stable Scoop Radio Show on the Horse Radio Network. You're listening to the Stable Scoop Radio Show where we're going to announce our new show. Yeah, you're listening to a whole bunch of stuff today. Yeah, this is going to be fun. We're so excited that Helene and I get to do another show together. We're not giving up on Stable Scoop. Stable Scoop's not going anywhere. We'll still do that every week, but we just weren't spending enough quality time together. <laughs> so, so hey, we... we control the network. We can do as many shows <laughs> as right. we want. And uh, we love tack, and we love clothing, and we love horse stuff. And we love to talk. And we love to talk. So we thought we'd combine all those into a new show, and that's what we have done. Yep. And we're Tack very and excited about show. it. It's called the Tack and Habit Radio Show. It's here on the Horse Radio Network. It's going to be the newest show as part of the network. We're starting it. Um, uh, actually, you're going to hear our listeners on Stable Scoop are going to hear it even before it's live on its own website at tackandhabit.com because we're going to let you listen to the first episode of the Tack and Habit Radio Show as part of this episode of Stable Scoop. We're just going to play the whole thing here in a couple minutes so you can get to hear what it's like, and we'd love for you to subscribe and, and check it out. We should tell everybody a little bit before we get into it, and then we'll, you'll learn the rest after the show starts because we explain it a lot in there. This is going to be a show about tack and habit, right? Tack and habit. Tack and clothing. Yep. Oh, well, not just tack. Gear, yeah, and, gear and, and cool stuff. And pretty much anything what? on a horse, off a horse, in the barn, off the barn, you know. It you could can, be remotely related to, to horses. The barn, you know, anything we like. We're going to try and cover a lot of new products, but there'll also be some products that have been around a while that you and I really like that maybe have had a transformation or a comeback, you know, that kind of thing. Mm-hmm. And we're just going to do two products a week. It's going to be a pretty short show. Uh, and we're going to get one guest on a week talking about one of the products, a manufacturer or somebody to explain it a little more than and, uh, than you and I maybe know. And of course, you and I have a background, which you'll hear in, in the Tack and Habit show coming up, uh, have a background in retail. So this is one of our passions and have been our passions for, for since the middle 90s, actually. There, I'm dating both of us there, Helena. <laughs> um, <laughs> you can thank me later. Uh, so, so this is something that we truly enjoy. It's something that you and I love to talk about, and it's called the Tack and Habit Radio Show. It's going to be once a week. It's going to come out on Mondays, and it's just going to be talking about two cool products a week or two crappy products a week or two silly products a week, whatever we decide. You're going to pick one. I'm going to pick one, and we're going to have a little contest, see who does better, and um, and then uh, we'll, we'll just have fun with it. It's going to be light and entertaining, and it should be a lot of fun. So that new show, we're going to insert right now into this show. You're going to hear it in a couple minutes. You'll hear the entire thing from start to finish. And then we'll be back after that to wrap up the Stable Scoop radio show here. And we hope you enjoy it. But first, we're going to, speaking of retail (laughs) and speaking of tech, there's uh, somebody that we, you and I both like, and that's Equestrian Collections. Equestrian Collections actually started about the same time that my wife and I did when we did the Horse Stuff Company. They came online right about the same time. They had a store called 1824, and they did all oversized clothing, and then they grew and grew and grew, and now Equestrian Collections is one of the largest retail websites on the Internet. They do a terrific job. If you're looking for anything in the horse world, whether it's clothing or tack or brushes or 
or stuff for the barn or stuff for your truck or trailer, check out EquestrianCollections.com first. They're bound to have it at a great price. And they've come out with a new coupon code for us now at the Horse Radio Network. And you can get $10 off your next order of $120 or more. And that coupon code when you're checking out is 10, the number 10, 10, discount all together 10 discount so if you put in 10 discount at checkout you're going to get ten dollars off your next order of 120 dollars or more and we all know how easy it is to spend 120 dollars and especially at equestrian collections because they have all the really good stuff so check it out at equestriancollections.com and we thank them for their support of the stable scoop radio show and now helena would you like to do a formal introduction of our first episode Oh my goodness. Yes. I, but I wouldn't know how <laughs> it's a new show. It's like starting all over again. It is, but, um, but we did better this time, I think, than we did the first show. Yeah, Scoop, maybe which we really just stay. slightly better. That's if we could remember the name of the show. <laughs> yes. Yes. I did have um, trouble. With well, having all these shows is kind of like having a bunch of kids, you know, you call them all by everybody, other, right. everybody else's name. I do have to think, cause I go right in from recording Stable Scoop to recording the 2010 radio show. And I can't tell you how many times in 2010 I've said Stable Scoop. So, <laughs> um, well, that's good. We need all the advertising we can get. <laughs> uh, yes, it's episode one of the Tech and Habit radio show, and we're going to be talking about two totally awesome products. Um, one, like as Glenn said, one that I picked, which is actually um, a nice little riding habit that um, I own, I personally own and love. And the other is a totally cool, high-tech, new, amazing piece of equipment for your barn that, that could change your life and your horse's life. This is episode one of the Tack and Habit Show, the first two products. Please support our title sponsor as they make this show possible. Kentucky Performance Products is your answer to keeping your horses healthy and happy. Visit them at kppusa.com. This is Glenn the Geek. And this is Helena B. And you're listening to the Tack and Habit Radio Show on the Horse Radio Network. Well, hi, Helena. <laughs> hi. Well, I am so excited about I this know. show. I know. I am so excited, too. You and I have both been in retail forever, and now we finally get a show to talk about stuff. Yes. And, and it's fun. I like the name, and I like that we get to do more chatting. And you did a terrific job with the logo, by the way. Thank you very the much. The logo is really cute. Helena designed a logo, so if you like the logo, send Helena an email. She re- really did a cute job. It actually looks like us, I think. It's us. That's us. <laughs> if you ever want to know what Glenn and I are about, look at the Tag and Habit logo. And uh, we should explain this show. It's going to be a short little show. I say a short little show. It's going to be a lot shorter than our other show. We do also do the Stable Scoop Radio Show here at the Horse Radio Network. And this is our first episode of the Tack and Habit Radio Show. And first explain maybe what the show is going to be about and how we came about the name. Well, um, the show is going to be about stuff. Um, Stuff, tangible stuff, things that you buy for yourself for your horse um clothing gear tack and equipment um tack is obviously self-explanatory and habits many of you may know the the term riding habits refers to the clothing that you wear while you're riding so we're going to talk about stuff tack and habits and this could be anything for you for your horse for the barn for your truck Anything, anything that's cool, crossover products, things that are used, you know, not in the horse industry, but could be helpful in the horse industry. And uh, we're not going to review products in terms of, you know, um, putting them through their paces. We're not testing products. We're just chatting about them because it's not humanly possible for the two of us to try everything that's out there. But we're going to try to talk about everything that's out there. Right, right. Well, that's that's true. And the other thing, Helena, is we're going to keep this in our normal mode, which is entertaining and very light. Uh, we want this to be a fun show. We're going to have fun doing it. We want you to have fun listening to it. But we also want it to be a little bit educational. We, we want you to learn about the products, but not in a dry, boring, dull way. That's not the way Helena and I roll, for sure. <laughs> um, we, we're just going to 
we talk about products and you know horse people do that they do that in the tack room they do that in the barn they talk about something they bought everybody comes over and looks at it that's kind of what we're doing here only in radio um and and we're gonna we're gonna have one guest an episode we're actually gonna cover two products an episode one that helena picks and one that i pick and we're the first product we talk about we're just gonna chat amongst ourselves talk about it and see see what we've learned and you know if one of us owns it and has used it that kind of thing and then uh, the second product, we're actually going to get a guest, uh, hopefully the manufacturer on, to really go into more depth about that second product. So we're going to be talking about fun products and practical products and ridiculous, stupid products. And if we think they're ridiculous and stupid, we're going to tell you. Well, if we're well not this, isn't back. A, this isn't a happy, happy, everything is great show. <laughs> <laughs> no, and, and uh, we're, we want to also acknowledge and, and we want to thank Kentucky Performance Products. They have come through and and agreed to sponsor this show and to be the title sponsor. And we really appreciate them being part of it. And they are a sponsor on a number of our other shows. And as soon as we told her about this show, she's so thrilled with the advertising that they've had over the last year. She said, I want to do it. I want to be the only sponsor in that show. <laughs> so thank you to Karen and everybody over at Kentucky Performance Products, not too far from where I live here in Kentucky. So we appreciate that as well. And they are happy, happy. Everything's great. Yes, uh, they, they, they've they added the number of shows. She started out advertising on two shows with us, and now she does five. So she is very happy with the results she's gotten with the tens of thousands of listeners that listen to the Horse Radio Network. But we should explain why you and I are a little bit qualified to do a show about tack and riding clothes and things like that. Hmm. So why don't you start? Where to start? Um, well, uh, I mean, I, I'm currently in the business of helping people who manufacture and sell horse equipment um, to help them market it. You know, I do a lot of work with retailers um, all over the country, some abroad. And, uh, you know, I've basically got my virtual hands in just about every product that's on the market today. Um, and I've been in it for a number of years. I own at least one horse at the moment. Um, I've worked in barns and... Let's see. What else? What else qualifies me? <laughs> well, I know that you've, you've been, you started out in tack actually years ago too. Like yes. I did, uh, I had a uh, tack store called the uh, Horse Stuff Company. My wife and I owned for years. We were one, of, we were the second website to have tack online back in the mid nineties. And actually it's funny that Equestrian Collections, another one of our sponsors on the other shows, that she was right in there with us. She was like the third or fourth. And I think I might have been right behind you. I had a, an online tax store called Hamilton Horse and Hound, and that was in the late 90s. Right. And Yeah, uh, yeah and we started doing that. That was mostly um, hunting stuff. But. And then I went over to, after we sold our business, we, I went to work for Bit of Britain and Unfinder Products, and I was the founder of Tack of the Day, which I'm sure many people listening to this show are going to know that's website. Woo-hoo. Tag of the day is great. And yeah. in fact, I'm, I do a lot of the ads, not a lot of them. I do all of them. Um, with uh, There's a woman who works over there with the Bit of Britain team. And together, we, we have taken over from you, Glenn the Geek. And uh, we're continuing with the Tack of the Day tradition. So the crappy humor for the first two years was me, and now the crappy humor is Alina. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, those of you who might be Tack of the Day fans, um, you'll know that I am the I Can Has Cheeseburger fan. <laughs> <laughs> I pick my favorite laugh out loud I can has cheeseburger photos and and share them with the tack of the day addicts. So that's me. Well, that's another that. topic. The I can has cheeseburger. That I heard the, them interviewed the other day on a podcast, and boy, they talk about building a little empire. Oh, uh, they are so funny, so so funny. I know, and they have forty employees now. Um, that's yeah, this is just uh, left that little silly website they did. But that's a different story. Yeah. All right, so we're going to get to our first product of the day. I think people probably know enough about us. They've been listening to us. Those that listen to Stable Scoop have been listening for a long time. And uh, we're, we're excited now that, uh, that we get to add this show about tack and habit to the lineup. You had the first product. What was the first product for you today? Oh, this is something that I actually own and absolutely love. It is the Carrots 24K Riding Jacket. And um, it's, it is. It's a, it's a riding jacket. It is a stretchy material flatteringly cut is that a word flatteringly i guess <laughs> you know what let's make it a word flatteringly that's gonna be a uh, helena helena word, word? Well, flatteringly well, we're cut. gonna have to see if we can use flatteringly in every episode now coat yes flatteringly um so anyway it's it's sort of an alternative to the traditional show coat and um 
Carrots, this particular... See, us guys would say it's tight and attractive. Absolutely. Well, I mean, come on. We wear britches and we wear, (laughs) you know... Yeah, it's sort of like the britches for the top. It's very um, form-fitting. Well, it's it's not... Here's the nice thing. This is what's great about this, is um, it is a riding coat. You... Now, it's a riding coat. You keep saying riding coat. Is it a riding coat for, like, wearing in a show? You could wear it in a show. It's really most appropriate for either dressage riders or jumper riders. Um, folks who are in the hunter, um, but who ride the hunters or in equitation classes, maybe not so much. because Only because I don't believe that it's illegal. Like, I don't think that you're going to be, that you can't wear it in that ring. But it's they're going to penalize the heck out of you. A, they may. Yeah. They may. Yeah. Um, now, so, this came out about five years ago, and I just stop you here. And yeah. it, they were advertising it as a substitute to a riding coat. And I got to be honest with you, when this first came out, I went, there's no way in heck this is ever going to be. It has zippers, and it doesn't have buttons. And has it taken off as a riding coat in the ring, in the show ring, or has it really just taken off as a cute coat to wear? It's taken a, a little bit of both. In Europe, it's had much more success in the show ring. Um, but you know what? They tend to lead the way in, in new stuff. Um, and again, in the jumper world, it's been shown. Uh, dressage is coming up there, but not so much. It's really more of, I mean, it depends on you. And, you know, it depends on what kind of personality you have in the show ring. Yes, you, it hasn't taken off. It's not like the next big thing. It's not like helmets when we sort of traditioned out of, tradition transitioned out of, the old school velvet helmets into all the new, you know, the high tech helmets that we have now. It's not taken off quite like that. Um, but I'll tell you, I think it can. I think because, uh, first of all, there are days when it's just not always warm and you need to have something to wear. It's a great jacket to wear no matter what you're doing. If you're schooling, if you're hacking out, number one, because it keeps you warm, and number two, because it's stretchy. Okay, it's stretchy. So now, what do people say when you're sporting your carrots twenty four carat riding jacket and looking all all uh, all that? At first, people think it is a show coat because it's cut like a show coat. You know, it's flattering in the sides and all that stuff. Um, and then when I get up close, like when I go for my lessons, I wear this because it helps me look neat and tidy, and I think it shows respect to my instructor. Um, and so they, at God, first, you they do live in New England. Oh, stop. <laughs> so hold on, but then I get up close and they're like, "Oh, I thought it was a show coat, but how cute." I get compliments everywhere. When I'm in the store, I'm in the grocery store, I love your jacket. I love your coat. And, of course, I stick my chest out, my chin up, and I say, <laughs> it's a riding coat. <laughs> um, but, yeah, I mean, yeah, a lot of people, and, of course, they have to touch it. So there are strangers who are touching me in the supermarket. <laughs> <laughs> Which could be Only, good or bad, depending. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> depending who it is. Men and women. I, I've honestly, I've been approached by by both men. and Well, women. we know why the men are approaching you. You probably look really good in your very tight, stretchy jacket. Yeah, with packing an extra thirty pounds. I don't think so. <laughs> Which again comes back to the stretchy material. How nice. Um, but but let me explain though. Yep, See, yep. The, the there's there's two versions of this coat. Previously, it was the carrots competitors jacket. And the collar, it was more of like a, a tab collar top. And this new version, the 24K jacket, has a, um, I guess they call it the lapel collar. So it does look a little bit more like a traditional hunt coat. And it's made, if you look at the picture, the picture on our website, it's actually a very clean looking coat. It so is, I think yep. that if anything is going to serve as a, an alternative to a traditional you know, hunt coat, this comes in pretty close. Well, Adam, we, we want to remind everybody that at TackAndHabit.com, that's T-A-C-K-A-N-D-H-A-B-I-T, TackAndHabit.com, we're going to have links to all of these products and pictures. So and we, we do realize this is radio, and you can't see it, so we're going to definitely put links there, and you'll be able to go see pictures. And the other thing we're doing on that website that's a little bit different is we're also putting all of the products – we're going to have links to all the products where you can actually buy them, so you don't have to remember all this when you're listening while you're driving or cleaning stalls. So you can just go to tackandhabit.com, and there'll be a link to where you can buy the product, and we'll try and find you the best price we can. I saw that this one was 100 bucks at Equestrian Collections. Does that seem about right? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, okay. so it's a good deal. Yeah. It's a good deal. And it, you can throw it in the washing machine. Now, is it just coming black, or is it black and blue, or...? I think the competitor jacket came in black and navy, but the 24K version comes in black and gray. I think that's the most recent that Carrots is offering. Okay, cool. And it looks like the fabric is a dynamic extreme fabric, which means absolutely nothing to anybody. Uh, Me either. It's just (laughs) just... stretchy. (laughs) But it says no ironing needed, so I'm assuming it doesn't get, like, uh, real wrinkly. Nope, it doesn't. 
That's no, good. And the pockets work. And it says one. it's water resistant. So have you stood under the shower with it on and checked it out? Mm, no. Yeah, no. You know, you really I'm, need to do more research about these products for our show. Yeah, you just want me to be out there in the rain. <laughs> so honestly, I need a horse that I can ride so that I can go out in the rain. Yes. Yeah, so somebody <laughs> please help her find a horse she's been looking forever. I'm close. I'm really close. Oh, good, good, good. Um, you and my wife spend hours on the phone just talking about all these horses you're taking a look at. She won't have anybody think that you guys won't have anything to talk about once you find a horse. I know. No, we will. We, we said that on the weekend. I, I said, Jen said, we're just going to change from talking about, you know, the potential of a horse to what we're doing. What, what should we do next with this horse? There you go. You actually we never have, have we never not have anything to talk no, about. No, that's please. true. Yeah, you two, you two don't have that problem. Like you and I don't either. I know. <laughs> <laughs> we just do it all on the air. So all right, this is great. a short it's show. This is a short show. Carrots 24K riding jacket from, from Carrots, who is a terrific company. And we've always enjoyed working with Carrots. Um, I think it's Carrie over there, who is the uh, one in charge of Carrots, has done a terrific job. They've become very popular. And uh, I think that was a good choice there, Helena. Thank you very much. And that's $100. You can find a link to it on our website. You don't have to remember the whole thing. Just go to attackandhabit.com. And we're going to take a short break, and then we're going to be back with the product I picked, which is a little bit higher price this week. We're not always going to have $2,400 products. <laughs> but this week, we thought we'd have a $2,400 product because it was a big hit at Rolex this year. And uh, we're going to have uh, the, uh, the director of the company on with us to talk about it. So we'll be right back after these words from our friends at Kentucky Performance Products. Well, if you're a regular listener to the show, you know we talk a lot about Kentucky Performance Products, and that's because they are a name you can trust to give you the most value for your supplement money. Kentucky Performance Products offers supplements designed to target specific problems that are made with high-quality ingredients included at effective levels. The company's supplements are intended to complement, not compete, with your dressage horse's current feeding program, guarding against over-supplementation, and each product is backed by sound research and the money-back satisfaction guarantee. And today, we'd like to talk to you about Nalox, the original equine antacid. It's recommended by veterinarians and leading horsemen as a way of maintaining a healthy stomach, which reduces the risk of ulcers. Nalox can be given daily to horses exposed to stressful conditions or as needed when shipping, competing, or during stall confinement. You know, you can learn about Nalox and all the products at Kentucky Performance Products at kppusa.com. That's Kentucky Performance Products at kppusa.com. Well, we're back, Helena, and I am very excited with my product of the week, and it's going to be interesting to see. It's going to be interesting to see what kind of reaction we get, and we'd love people to email us, tell us if you use these products. We'd love to get customer feedback on the website. You can leave comments, and we're going to have we're going to have the website two ways. It's going to be by episode, like all of our other shows, but we're also going to have a separate blog section where each product's going to be separate. So you can just go through and look at the products and and find them that way. Do a search for a product, and then listen to the show that that product was so you can you're gonna be able to search our website a number of different ways i just thought that would be a good idea for people yeah because you know you hear it about it you and then even if you get there and you're like gee i forgot the name of that product we'll make it easy for you to find yep and so that 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 should be very easy to do and of course over a year's period of time we're going to put this show out every week and over a year's period of time we'll have covered 104 products did we decide what day we're going to yeah yes helena i think we've decided that we're going to put this out on mondays because a lot of our other shows come out at the end of the week like stable scoop so we're gonna put uh, does monday sound okay to you monday's great All something right, to look good. forward to make monday a little bit better all right well my product was a big hit uh at rolex at the three-day event here in kentucky just happened a couple weeks ago and it, we actually voted this vendor as vendor of the year at rolex on the stable scoop radio show and it is a product called hay gain and had you ever heard of it never what it is is it's a it's a steamer it's actually a product that you put your hay into the basket to the thingy, and he'll have more technical terms for that. We're getting Clint Joyner on, to, who is the director of Hay Gain. But you put your hay into this thing, and it steams it, and it does something to it, makes it all wonderful. And the reason I have him on is because I don't understand why this is great. Um, and I also don't understand why he sold out of this product at Rolex. And, wow. and 
a ton of the big name inventors and dressage riders and western riders across the country, professionals, are using hay gain. And I want to find out why it's become so popular and why people are shelling out $2,000, $3,000 for these units and what exactly it does. So I just thought, you know, we need to find out more about this because it truly was a popular booth at at rolex people were coming in there and they really wanted it explained and plus anytime you put steam on hay it smells so good that whole tent smelled good it smelled like you just cut you know how do you, you get that fresh hay smell in your yes, barn when you yes. stack the hay you just cut the day before that's what the whole tent smelled like it's like it cooking great. hay it it's is like coming it's like, into a kitchen <laughs> and it's supposed to do something to it so i think we should get him on because obviously you and i know nothing about this so that's just true. let's just get uh, clint joiner on who's the director of hay Gain. Well, hi, Clinton. Welcome to the Tack and Habit Radio Show. We appreciate you being on. Well, Glenn, thank you very much for having us. Uh, hey, Gaines, thrilled to be a part of this. Well, you know, I got to meet you at Rolex, and we got to spend a little time chatting, but I really didn't get to chat with you a whole lot about what your product actually does because there were too many people in your booth. Buying it. Yeah. <laughs> that's right. Well, that's a good thing. That normally is a, is a good sign of uh, success for a product, and we were pleased with the turnout at Rolex. It was a great competition with some of the world's best athletes, both human and horses. And uh, we see folks that uh, really understood the product almost immediately. Uh, but if you want to ask some pointed questions, I'll be glad to further explain the process and the product. Okay, so now let's start with a product I had picked out, and we can talk about a couple of your others too, but I had picked out the Haygain HG1000, which makes it sound like it's really cool. <laughs> um, and first, tell us, let, before I get to that product, which, by the way, sells for 2400 bucks, and I just want to... I need to justify that. You know, if my wife came to me and said, I want to spend 2400 bucks on a contraption you put hay in, you better be telling me why I need to spend 2400 bucks on a contraption you put hay in. Well, what, uh, is, what is it and what, what does yeah, it do? Yeah. Okay. Well, let me back up a little bit. Before we launched the product, we spent yeah. 18 months research. And okay. the research was very important for us because we thought we had something that was very much a, um, a product that was commercially viable for horses that have res respiratory issues. But we wanted to make sure that we had science that would back up the actual product's um, benefits. And aren't so you part of a bigger company, too? We are, exactly right. Our, our parent company is Jiffy Steamer Company. We've been around for uh, 70 years, and all we make are commercial boilers. Um, so that parent company is a USA-based. All our products are made in USA, and uh, we make some of the finest commercial, residential, and travel um, steamers, uh, steam generators that are available to the public today around the world, have a presence in over 48 countries and have over a thousand dealers in the U.S. alone. So, um, very much of a well-established, um, um, family-run, family-owned, American-born um, and bred um, company. By You're the not the country. ones on the infomercial with the little steamer on the. We, we don't do the infomercials, but if you go to any any of your um, favorite clothing stores, boutiques, you'll see the clerks that are in the on the floor removing the wrinkles from the garments. Um, that's our product. Um, oh, you'll okay. see them literally wiping away the ste the wrinkles with the steamer. Oh, thank you, <laughs> <laughs> thank you. <laughs> but it, it, that's a great product, no question about that. Uh, hey, gain aside, that's uh, that's uh, the parent company of Jiffy, and we knew that we had a product that could produce the steam at the temperatures needed um, to be able to cycle um, a bale of hay and do and do several things, which I'll get to in a moment. Okay. But we worked with the Royal Agricultural College in um, Sirencester, England. And we did that because there was a study back in 1998 where that college had done a, uh, um, a doctoral study that was basically steaming hay in the benefits thereof. So after reading this and really scratching our heads a little bit more, knowing that we're in the steamer business, working with our partners in London on this, we knew that we could come up with a commercially viable product that possibly could help us um, uh, circle mount or, or I, I should say – jump the hurdles of a lot of the respiratory systems that horses have, um, respiratory issues that horses have. So um, after 18 months of study, we found out that the, the steamers that we were able to manufacture would um, be able to be introduced to a unique custom-built chest that has a manifold system that uniquely um, um, diffuses the steam by piercing the bell from the underside, and it cooks it from the inside out. So what we're doing, Glenn and, and Helena, uh, Helena, excuse me, um, we're taking a bale of hay that's full of dust and full of mold spores and all types of bad things. And, and in your mind, kind of think about what you do in your kitchen with vegetables. And, and we're steaming vegetables. You're killing all the bad and locking in all the good. And that's what we're it's doing like a pressure cooker. It's like exactly a pressure right. cooker. <laughs> that's but, right. She's yeah, got it, Glenn. 
<laughs> yeah, are you still scratching your head, Glenn, or do you, are you starting to starting to understand? Okay, so I'm starting to understand, but tell me why that's important, or why I should why I should tell my wife, okay, spend twenty four hundred bucks on a steamer. Well, even top choice hay has a lot of dust in it. You can break open a bale of hay and flake it out and look at it in the sunlight, and you can see all that airborne particulate matter. Um, and what the steam the hay gain hay gain steamer does is it cuts down on the amount of airborne dust. Number two, it's going to kill the mold spores, and one in six horses have severe allergies to the mold that's in the hay. When you have an allergic reaction, obviously you have um, the upper respiratory system is going to become inflamed. The oxygen exchange is going to be um, sacrificed, and the performance of your horse is going to be um, sacrificed as well. So by killing those mold spores, which are the allergens that cause inflammation, we're able to keep a healthy respiratory system in these performance sport horses. Uh, the third thing it does, it rehydrates the bale. And by rehydrating it with uh, three-quarters of a gallon of water, that's six pounds of water back into that bale. So the bale goes in 50 pounds, it comes out 56. And that's important, especially in the wintertime when horses tend to be um, dehydrated. Mm-hmm. And the fourth thing, and this is what the horses care about, so they need to prick up their ears right now and listen to this part, because um, it makes for extremely sweet and palatable feed for the horse. They absolutely mop it up. So the owners will appreciate this, and the barn managers, so they have less wastage of the hay that's fed. Uh, the horses tend to eat that a little slower because it is warm, which is good for the digestive system. And you've actually, Glenn, you've opened up the cellular wall of the hay. By doing that, by going through the steam cycle, you've opened up the cellular wall so you, the horse can actually um, digest the hay better than dry hay. Hmm. So, so did, you, did your studies show... Um horses that have been on hay treated in the hay gain product um were they better able to hold their weight how did you um quantify or qualify the results of of horses eating hay treated this way that's a good question and and what we wanted to make sure was that that number one the, the hay gain system um was was killing all the this bad in the bell of hay. Now, uh, every bell of hay, no matter what what choice, what quality it is, it's going to have dust in it. It's going to have mold in it. And and what we are trying to do is mimic the pasture conditions back in a stall environment. And we've domesticated these animals so much. By 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 nature's intention, the horse should be out on pasture 16, 18 hours a day, eating green grass and enjoying life and having good mucus flow with the head down posture, eating in the cilia and the nasal passageway, capturing any of the contaminations, any of the dust, any of the mold spores, and then flushing it right back out with the mucus. Well, when we put them in a stall environment, and some folks will feed on hay nets, chest chest level, um, maybe bed them down even on straw, which is extremely dusty, you can actually induce an asthmatic-type reaction in a horse, a completely healthy horse. Um, so what we're trying to do is, is try to mimic pasture conditions back to the stall. We've taken horses that um, were healthy, um, put them in those conditions, and uh, they started to see inflammation in the upper respiratory system, quickly put them on hay gain, and it subsided immediately. Uh, We've had horses that are uh, post-colic surgery horses, have no appetite whatsoever, just don't have uh, even a desire to eat. They'll eat the steamed hay. And we've had horses that um, have a choice between grain or hay, and they're choosing hay first, which is a is a huge testament, even of even sweet feed. You know, it's um, interesting too. You, you mentioned colic. That's one of the things I was thinking about. Is I've had a number of horses over the years that we've had to water their hay, um, right. and this is doing it in a much more effective manner than dunking the hay in a bucket of water. Um, and does it, well, not only is that a, a messy job, Glenn. Yeah, you know, it is. In the winter time, it's probably the worst job. Yeah, it um, is. <laughs> and you, you give the you serve up the horse a nice uh, uh, clump of wet, cold. Hey, not very appetizing. Versus steaming it, it's it's very um, palatable for the horse. They absolutely love the smell. And and what you're doing when you're soaking hay is you're leaching out a lot of the important nutrients in in the hay. When steaming it, the nutri- nutritional profile of the hay going in is the same going out. So you do not lose any type of nutrients when steaming hay. So you, so it doesn't. I mean, what about if you put a bad bale of hay in there? Like you know, there's there's different kinds of quality hay and you can get sure. crappy hay let's face it um it's not going to make a crappy bale better but it might make it more palatable or well what, what, you know if you have obvious signs of mold and you're having so if it's completely starting, black inside we you, you no. still don't use it <laughs> no, yeah, you, need to, you need to flake that out we would not suggest feeding that whatsoever um but if you have um dusty hay um if, if you have hay that uh uh, is, is, is something that you um, feel like that the steaming could or even soaking it could benefit it, then steaming it is going to benefit it even more. Okay. 
So now, okay, so let's get to the practical side of this. The one I talked about was the uh, hay gain uh, 1000, which apparently holds a, a whole bale of hay. Is that right? It, it does, Glenn. It holds um, up to a 120-pound three-strung bale, which is... Uh, that's a big bale. Oh, that's even two small for, bales, yeah. So Yeah, uh, that's what you'd see normally West Coast or in race yards. Um, but, you know, most folks in the country... Oh, geez, and use, Helena, I hate those now. bales. I hated those heavy bales. <laughs> the big ones. Give me those two 50-pounders any day. <laughs> that's right. I agree. I agree. But it's designed to be inserted into the steam chest, and it slides over the spikes again that pierce it and steam it from the inside out. And you keep the unit fully strong. So the bale stays fully strong during oh, okay. the cycle. So it's very easy to take out as well. Or you could throw hay nets in there too, right? You could. You certainly could. You could You could throw flakes as needed. You could feed, uh, you know, from one flake all the way to, you could probably even squeeze a bell and a half in there um, of the 50, 60-pound bells. Now this so and how is it? How you introduce how is it, it is, is, really not a, is really not a factor. Okay. How is it powered? It's powered with regular 120-volt um, um, electricity. So you plug it simply into the, the barn outlet. And uh, the full bell is going to require 25 amps of power. And we also have, we're talking about the full bell now, but I'll introduce the, the half bell, which is uh, just a smaller brother to the full bell. Um, it has the same type spike manifold that introduces the steam from the inside of the bell outward, and uh, it uses 12 and a half amps. And as far as electrical consumption, a lot of folks uh, are, are keen on that. It uses about eight cents an hour of, uh, of electricity. Well, and that, that's a good question. How long does it take to do a bale of hay? I mean, this is something you have to think about ahead of time. You can't just do like I do and run out to the barn when your wife yells at you and throw the hay in. Um, <laughs> well, there's there's a couple of things you can do to, to make it easy on you. Number one, we would suggest a timer, simple wall timer. Uh, if you feed it, say, 6 a.m., you'd back it up to 5. So and, it's an hour you know, it, it takes? On. It's, yes, it takes it takes an hour okay. for it to go through the cycle. Um, and part of that hour, you've got 20 minutes from a cold start in the boiler tank. The water's cold, and it's just like boiling water on a stove. It takes about 20 minutes for it to come up to full boil, and then the cycle is going to take 30 to 40 minutes on top of that. Um, and that's the same for the full bell as it is for the half bell. So if you have a whole barn full of horses and you use three or four or five bales at a time, you, one one hay gain is not going to do the whole barn. You're going to be selective probably. You're going to give it to the horses that you think might need it the most. Is that? Well, what, what we'd like to say is that hay gain, there's nothing negative that hay gain will, will um, introduce to a horse. Um, we like to say for every five to six horses, you'll probably need a full bale unit. But if you look at it this way, if you have a timer on the unit, and uh, the first bell is ready when you get there. You check the second bell in, so the second cycle is going to be only about 30 minutes because your boilers are already at full steam. Okay. They're okay. roaring away and, and pumping out 3,000 watts of steam into that chest. So the second bell is going to be done in about 30 minutes. And is it loud? When, or can it be in the barn? No, I mean, no, 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 no. No, it's very quiet. You can't even tell it's It running. doesn't sound like a, a steam train coming down and... <laughs> no? No, <laughs> no, it doesn't. It's, okay. it's, 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 well, what... What what is emitted from it is simply the the smell of of it smells like oh, fresh and it does egg. smell good. It smells nice. <laughs> so it so it, it kills the the temperature inside the steam the, the hot steam because steam is hot. <laughs> the steam kills icky stuff. What kind of icky stuff does it kill? Well, it's gonna it's the, the mold spores are the are really the number one allergen that causes the upper respiratory system inflammation, um, and it's gonna cut down on any of the dust. Um, it's it's airborne or particulate matter, um, and then by rehydrating the bell as well, but not making it soaking wet. And, and that's important. Some of the horses just don't, they don't find it appetizing if it's soaking wet. Um, and there's, there's studies, that we're, we're doing studies currently with Pretoria University in South Africa, continuing studies with the Royal Agricultural College um, in England, with Virginia Tech in, in Western Virginia, and also with uh, Michigan State. Um, and we're, what we're studying are barn environments. We're looking at all kinds of different types of, from E. coli to salmonella to EPM, all types of different, um, uh, as you say, uh, the, the nasty stuff that's in a bell of hay or could be in a bell of hay. Um, those studies are ongoing, and we'll certainly update on our website, uh, which is hayging.us, um, any of the uh, findings as we start to conclude the, the studies. All right. We're running out of time, but I did want you to have an opportunity to talk about you have a portable one, too, right? You're right, Glenn. Um, in response to our customers' um, uh, request, we've come up with called the, the Hay Gain Go. And the Hay Gain Go is designed for someone that may have a half bell or full bell at home. And then as they go on the road or go to uh, horse shows and competitions, et cetera, they may take one or two, maybe three horses 
um, at a time. And there's no need for them to trudge that entire unit of the HD-1000 with a full bell unit to the show. They need something that's much more portable, collapsible, and something they can stow away easily in their, in their trailer. So the Hagen Go is what we what we came up with, and it's a 45-gallon collapsible. Um, you can think of a gear bag that stands on its end. So you load the hay from the top. You've got the manifold system and spikes at the bottom, and then on the side attaches the boiler unit, and it pumps in 1,500 watts of steam, and uh, it's the same type cycle. It takes 20 minutes for it to heat up and then 30 minutes for the cycle to f- complete the uh, the, the process and there were a really few, really handy and there were a those, few of those being those. used at rolex in the barns um yes, there were there were that <laughs> we had about uh 10 units in the barns at rolex uh nine or ten units in use in the barns at rolex feeding about of the field of horses of 53 i think it was feeding about 18 horses so uh several of those horses in competition were on hay gain steam day and and we like to say and hope that it helped the, the horses compete even better. And Helena, let me tell you some of the names. Debbie McDonald, who's co-host of the uh, uh, Dressage Radio Show here on the network, two-time uh, Olympian, uses it. Allison Springer, who's been on the shows. Sinead Halpin's been on the shows. Yeah, uh, I was reading the testimonials. Yeah, Bonnie Mosser. I mean, yeah. you know, this is all people that uh, are friends here at the network and are also using hay gain. So I think it's something that it's definitely worth taking a look at and, Maybe I won't argue with my wife so much. And it has wheels. <laughs> it has wheels, that's right. I like things that have wheels. wheels. It's portable and easy to move. You know, it's funny yeah, because when you talk about the old days and the old steamer trunks, this is a steamer trunk. You're right. Exactly right. It's kind of a kickback to You just that. put it at the end of the bed and uh, power it up. Uh, well, some of the best riders in the world choose hay gain, and they do it for a reason. They want the absolute best um, for their horses, and they know that the performance of their respiratory system in the horse is key to uh to a quality ride and uh we we've been very pleased with again you mentioned some of the top riders there's a there's a long list of testimonials on our website we'd encourage folks to to check that out and inquire if they have any questions we'll be glad to help any way we can well that's great well and how much does the portable unit run it's going to be 600 it comes out june 15th and it's going to be the hg go the hay go is 600 well, there we go. And uh, you heard it first here on, t- on t- the Tack and Habit show. show. Do you well, remember the name of the new show? Uh, yeah, I'm trying to remember the name of the Tack show. Tack and, and Habit. Have it. Well, thank you very much, Clint. We appreciate you being on. Well, that was terrific. Did you enjoy that product? Did you see? Did you see? I did I do okay? I, you did great. And I'm just pleased as punch that this product is out there. I'll tell you, you know, my husband is a big um, proponent of pressure cookers for people food. And he's a cook. Um, yeah, yes, for, for a whole bunch of different reasons, but not the least of which is that um, by steaming your food, you actually preserve a lot of what makes it good for you. Because, As opposed to boiling it where it just boils it all out. Well, water and light break down a lot of the essential nutrients in food, and steam does not. So if you're boiling things, you're, you know, you're exposing all that good stuff to water, which totally breaks it down, and you, know, you don't have a lid on it. So anyway, the whole idea of pressure cooking or steaming things um, really makes a difference, and I, I think this is a fabulous product. All right. Well, good. Well, I think we both did good today. And, of course, you can find links to all the products at tackandhabit.com. We'll be back every week on Mondays with this show with two new products every week. And you can give us feedback. We'd love to hear what you think about the products. You can leave comments on our website, or there's a contact link right there on the top of the website. You can drop us an email or leave us a voicemail. We'd love to hear from you. We'd like to do a little bit of an email or voicemail section at the end of every show where you make comments on, on the products that we've done before if you own them or if you think it's silly or stupid or ridiculous or wonderful just let us know and of course you can follow us on twitter at horse radio and helena can be followed at helena underscore b-e-e and we also want to thank our sponsor kentucky performance products for being part of this show we really appreciate them uh supporting us in our efforts here and of course you can listen to all the other great shows on the horse radio network i think there's eight or nine now i've lost count <laughs> and that's at horseradionetwork.com well helena we'll talk to you again next week with two new products that's right right here on tack and habit Well, was that fun or what? We had a blast doing our first show, and Clint was great. Love it. Love him. Love it. Love it. Love it. Love it all. Happy. Oh, <laughs> happy, good. Happy. Well, we hope everybody enjoyed that. Check us out at tackandhabit.com. The first show, this first episode, you got to hear a preview of, and that's only for the listeners of the Stable Scoop Radio Show got to hear that. And then it'll go weekly starting on Monday at tackandhabit.com. And that's Monday the, I totally lost track of what the date is, uh, uh, Monday the 17th. <laughs> Uh, so that'll, I don't know. 
And I wanted, we have another exciting announcement here at the Horse Radio Network, and that's we have a new giveaway. And I did a recording uh, the, last week with the people who actually donated these prizes, and it is something terrific, and it involves the World Equestrian Games. So let's take a listen. This is Glenn the Geek here for the Horse Radio Network, and we have a very special announcement of a new giveaway that we're doing, and we're very excited about this because it ties in with the World Equestrian Games. And I have with me now Chrissy Joy, who's actually been on the 2010 radio show before, to chat about this cool giveaway that we're doing. Hi, Chrissy. Hi, Glenn. How are you? Good. Now, you were on the show with us, and you actually, last summer, were working as a intern over at the World Equestrian Games offices, and now you're with us uh, on, the sh- on the air here today in a little different capacity. Absolutely. I am coming from being an intern with the World Equestrian Games and I'm back in Lexington as a part of the Bluegrass Medallions, which are the official medallions of the World Equestrian Games, and they come in bronze, silver, and gold, and they are beautiful, and we are so happy to announce that we are doing a contest for a giveaway. Uh, We're going to have three lucky winners that will win, uh, whether it's bronze, silver, or gold, you never know, but um, the exciting part is these are the highest quality. They are, the gold one is gorgeous. It is 0.999 0.999 fine silver with 24 carat plated gold. So it is definitely bling for the ring. You're going to want it, that's for sure. Well, let's explain to people. Let's back up a little bit and, and explain to people the medallions are like coins. They look like coins. They're not official currency. That's why they're not called coins. Yeah, don't try to spend them. <laughs> <laughs> but they are. They look like a coin. And yeah. on one side, it has the Alltech FEI uh logo that that uh what i call the flaming horse there and mm-hmm. then on the other side it has that logo as well plus all the little logos of all the eight disciplines uh for the games so it, it, it they're really pretty and they, they are the official medallions of the games and and medallions are collectible at olympics at all the olympics and at the world equestrian games at all the big sporting events around the world these medallions are a collector's item people that attend these events or even if they don't want to collect the medallions right absolutely the quality of these medallions is something that's going to last a lifetime and this event being so historical the first time in the united states these coins will only be available this year during the time of the games it's pretty much the best thing you could do if you have a family member who possibly can't come. Um, these will last a lifetime, and they come in a beautiful case and a certificate of authenticity. So it's really something special to hold on to, and it's handcrafted quality, so it's gorgeous. I have seen them in person, and they're very nice. And what we're going to do here at the Horse Radio Network is we're going to have this exclusive giveaway of a gold, a silver, and a bronze. So we'll, we'll have three different winners. All you have to do is stop by Horse Radio Network and click on the giveaway banner on the page or any of our websites for any of our shows. The banner will be there. You click on it, and you, all you have to do is go register. It's free. It's easy. There's no obligation. And it doesn't matter whether you're coming to the games or not. You can win, win one of these beautiful materials. Medallions, and we're you know we appreciate that uh, that Bluegrass Medallions is working with us on this giveaway and and donating these items. It's over a five hundred dollar value, isn't it? It is. It's over five hundred dollars, and we are just so thrilled to be a part of the Horse Radio Network as well. Bluegrass Medallions um, recently just hooked up with the World Equestrian Games, and we are just loving how excited everyone is, and we su- want to support our fans because you guys are pretty much the foundation to how this event's going to run and how everyone's going to have a great time. So we are so thrilled to share our medallions with you. And we hope you all, you know, sign up for the giveaway because it's a great value. It is over $500 and you will not regret the quality of these items. All right, great. Well, you can stop over to horseradionetwork.com and you can sign up there. And if you would like to buy one of these medallions, you can do so now at the at the uh, WEG store at the World Equestrian Games. You can go to their official site or you can go just to their directly to their shopping site at WEG2010store.com. That's WEG2010store.com or you can go to their main site at alltechfeigames.com and you'll find the medallions in there that you can purchase. So 
well, thank you very much, Chrissy, and thank you to Bluegrass Medallions for donating these items. Absolutely. Everyone, go quick. Sign up for the giveaway. It's going to be great, and we hope to see you at the World of Craft Games this year. Well, Helena, they can sign up for that just by going to StableScoop.com, and there's a big banner in the middle of the page. Just click on that, and it's free and easy to sign up, and you could win your very own gold World Equestrian Games medallion. They're the official medallions of the World Equestrian Games, and they're really cool, and people do collect those uh, at all the Olympics and World Equestrian Games. They become real collector's items. So check it out, because you could win one of the three that we talked about there, and we're very excited about that. And, of course, they should listen to next week's Stable Scoop show. And also, you can find all of our show notes at StableScoop.com. And our contact link on the website uh, is right there. You can just send us an email, send us uh, show ideas. We love to get mail from you. We love to hear from you. And, of course, as we said on Tack and Habit, you can follow us on Twitter at Horse Radio and Helena at Helena underscore B. And we want to thank our sponsors again. We want to thank uh, we want to thank Equestrian Collections for being the retail sponsor here on the Stable Scoop radio show. And, Helena, Bye. we have a ton of shows now on the Horse Radio Network, and you can find them all at horseradionetwork.com. <laughs> Did I just say what? Yeah, you just said what. Yeah, that's right. Uh, I, I set you up we and you said what. Um, that was good. This is bloopers. <laughs> this is total bloopers. Duh, again. I well, mean- I got to tell you, you can be redeemed because over on the Western Radio Show, the new Western Radio Show with Alan and Jimmy K, yeah. he, do- he has more bloopers than you could ever count. And oh, I'm saving them all. So. I'm redeemed. Yes, you're redeemed. I think that he has actually taken over the king of bloopers. Um <laughs> And I warned him, I said, we're going to put a DVD, a Christmas DVD, get uh, together at the end of the year with all the bloopers from all the different shows. (laughs) And uh, we're going to sell it. And I'm sure it'll be a big seller, too. because And he can't get through the opening, that opening thing where we say, um, the opening intro, this is episode 90. It takes him five times to get through that because he wants it just perfect. (laughs) And I just laugh because I think of you. (laughs) I'm good at the opening now. I'm great at it. That used to be tough fun for me. Yeah, you got that down. It's the ending that you were having trouble with still. My little brain is just... <laughs> it's like I'm like a hamster on a wheel, you know? I can only go in one direction. <laughs> if you try to make me do something else while I'm on the wheel, I get all messed up. All right. Well, get off your reel and let's uh, let's plan next week's show. And we'll be back in a week here at... Uh, <laughs> Stable Scoop. The Stable Scoop Radio Show. And you're supposed, to, you're supposed to say with the scoop, but uh, we'll forgive you if you forget that. Well, no, you totally, no, no, no. I know, no. I messed you, you up. You threw me time. off. I did you try me that off intentionally, the wheel. too. Push me off my wheel. All right, well, if we've done two shows here today, I think that's enough. Okay. All right, see you next week. Bye. Bye.